try to start. So any question from this time? <coughs> this time we go over for okay. sit down. Yeah. This time we go over for very important signals. So they are the uni discrete time uni impulse and the discrete <coughs> uni state function. So discrete time uni impulse is just this function. It has a one somewhere and a zero other where. And the discrete time unit state function looks like this. It is one 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 starting from somewhere and the zeros at all the negative time. And uh, then we have a continuous time version of this. And the continuous time version are harder to define. So continuous time unit state function also look like step. So it's a zero when t is less than zero and uh, uh, one when t bigger than one. And the uh, continuous time uni impulse actually is uh, zero everywhere. It says that it's an infinity at uh, t equal to zero. And uh, it's, uh, I guess it's uh, <coughs> value is defined by the area on the area when you try to integrate integrate over it. So this is defined as the limit of this rectangular when the width of a rectangle goes to zero, but the area of the rectangular stays one. Yeah. And uh, so we'll write delta function as this. So it's an arrow means that this, at this point actually goes to infinity. But we have a one here means that when you integrate over it, the area is one. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so this integration can be seen as uh, one of the definition of, can be seen as the definition of the delta function or unit <coughs> impulse function for continuous time. You integrate over it, it has the area one. And the uh, unit state function is also defined as the, uh, <coughs> for the continuous time, is also defined as this uh, limit of this uh, u sub triangle thing. And uh, so it's this uh, <coughs> uh, slope this function when the slope goes to uh, <coughs> infinity, when the triangle goes to zero. And uh, we say the t equals zero, u of t is undefined. Okay? And uh, yeah, so the unit state function and uh, the <coughs> unit impulse function are related by derivative and the integral. So if you uh, if you differentiate the unit state function, it becomes the delta function or unit impulse function. And uh, when you integrate over the <coughs> when you integrate over the delta function, you get back to the unit state function. And uh, yeah, so we have this example that we run through very quickly about the relationship between unit state function and uh, delta function. So you see this is like a, uh, several unit state function piece together. So maybe let's just go to the answer here. So this function here, so it's a constant everywhere, but it has a three, uh, <coughs> three discontinuous jumps at the t equal to one, two, and four. So you can write this function as a three unit state function adding together. <laughs> so it's like a, uh, a, a t minus u of t minus one is a <coughs> u of t minus one with a high two starting from here. Then you minus three over u of t minus two. Then you plus two over u of t minus four. So this function will become the uh, <coughs> this. Uh, algebraic equation will describe this function and then you take a derivative of this thing then you see that you get three delta function. So uh, this is uh, u of t minus one get derivative you get uh, uh, delta of t minus one and uh, then all the coefficient goes down and uh, so you get this three delta <coughs> function here. So delta of t minus one with the height uh, two <coughs> Actually, means uh, so all the height are infinity, but this means if you integrate over this peak, you get the uh, area of two, and the minus three times delta of t minus two, and uh, plus two of the u delta of t minus t minus four. Okay, so peak is one, two, four, and uh, with area two minus three and uh, two. Okay, okay, so that's a quick review of uh, unit state function and the delta function. Any question? If not, then let's go to something totally different again. Let's go to actually talk about systems. So we have been talking about a lot of signal. And uh, now we can talk about systems. <coughs> okay. And uh, as we say in the first class, so uh, system is something that take an input signal and uh, give you output signal. Okay. So it's like a function of functions, <coughs> if you think of it mathematically. And uh, this uh, <coughs> a system, 
uh, describe a lot of uh, engineering system that will build, so like signal processing, communication, etc., etc. So it's a very nice idea for engineers <coughs> because uh, as you engineering something, some device, you can think of you are building some system that takes the input signal to to give you the output signal you want. And uh, so, <coughs> as we say, mathematically system, we have this uh, funny notation. So we actually describe the system with the uh, input and output. So we say we have some input signal x of t, so this is just a, <coughs> we have some input signal x of t, then the system is just this red arrow here, this small arrow here, it's no name and nothing, but uh, <coughs> uh, we think our system take x of t and give us y of t. And we'll describe the system by having some relationship between x of t and y of t. And actually here, the, the actual thing we are describing is, uh, so we have two kinds of system. Probably, so we have continuous time system and the discrete time system. So obviously, continuous time system takes the continuous time signal to uh, another continuous time signal. So input continuous time, output continuous time. Discrete time system, input discrete time, output discrete time. Okay. So not too much here, it's just notation. <coughs> And yeah, so you can see that the system we all always have the same small arrow symbol, even for the continuous time and discrete time. And uh, we just describe the system by describing a relationship between the input, the input and the output signal. Okay, so let's give some physics example of system. So <coughs> a system that fits, uh, I guess, the E department lot is this RC circuit. So a circuit system. This is a very standard system. So you have some voltage here that will drive your system. You can put whatever input signal as whatever voltage. Then, then this voltage is hooked up with a resistor and a capacitor. And you can think the input signal is the voltage here. And there are a lot of things in this system, in that, sorry, in, in this circuit system that can be think of as the output signal. And uh, so here we think the output signal is the voltage and the capacitor here. So you can think about you drive this system with uh, some input voltage here, then, then you have some output signal here that you can measure with maybe a meter. And uh, yeah, then you can solve physics here. So let's can skip, let, let us skip the physics. So you can skip the physics and uh, in the end you will find out that uh, how this output signal is related to the input signal is uh, dvc dt equal to 1 over rc vc and <coughs> plus 1 over rc vc equal to 1 over rc ys okay so if you think the input signal as x of t and the output signal as y of t then you find out that the output signal y of t is related to input signal x of t by this equation so it's actually related by a differential equation and uh, uh, we don't have an explicit form here but this is just an example showing that the system might have this implicit may be described by this implicit <coughs> differential equation. So we have the dy dt plus the ay equal to bx, where n and b depends on the physical parameter here, so actually a and b equal to 1 over rc. But this is a very general form to, one of the very general forms to describe the system is write down a differential equation that's relating the output signal and the input signal. Okay, question? Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so that's a system. And uh, we have another system, I guess it's not so physical, but also very common. That's uh, balancing your bank account. So you can think about the input signal is how much you deposit into your bank account into each month. And uh, the output signal is the total balance. So how much money you have in your bank account, in your bank account at the end month. And uh, this is a discrete time system because you will take points at each month. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so the bank account, uh, <coughs> now it is a system with memory because, <coughs> because uh, how, how much you have a bank account depends on all the previous money you put in your bank account. And uh, so this bank account only also have 1% interest rate. So how much total money you have is, well, <coughs> So the money you have this month is the money you have last month uh, and the times the 1% interest rate plus the 1% interest rate, so you have 1.01 1 .1, <coughs> 1 .01 here and plus how much you deposit this month. Okay. 
So once again, you see the system can be described by some equation. And uh, this is called a difference equation. So kind of a, a, <coughs> a counterpart of a differential equation in discrete time is this difference equation. And uh, we want to put all the y of n on one side and all the y of n on another side. So maybe we, the most standard form to write this equation is y of n minus 1.01 y of minus 1 n minus 1 equal to x of n. And uh, skip ahead of ourselves a little bit. So this differential equation and the difference equation is a, a big part of uh, this course. So later on we'll learn to how to solve this equation and uh, uh, tell you that if you have some x of n, what's y of n if they are described by these equations. Okay? But for now, uh, this is just an <coughs> example of some system. Okay, It's not too much because of other examples. Okay. And uh, yeah, so <coughs> more physical examples, so maybe an uh, automobile system. Uh, you can think of you have a car, then you will drive it with some force. And uh, so you have some force f of t, <coughs> then the car with some velocity that will output signal v of t. And uh, then you can get this current system here by just taking some samples. So maybe you, <coughs> yeah. So maybe you just take some force at uh, <coughs> some time step. Simple as time time step, then you can think about the velocity also as some time step. Okay. And uh, okay, and uh, another big concept that we'll go into more detail later is, uh, I guess this is very important for engineers now. Uh, is uh, <coughs> you can if you want to build a very complicated system, then you want to hook up uh, some simpler systems. So what the, <coughs> the some of the way that you can hook up systems are like uh, this uh, serial or <coughs> parallel interconnection of systems. So you can think of, uh, you have uh, some system one here, that will take an input to output, then you feed the output of system one to another system two. Okay, so you can do this uh, serial or cascade interconnection of system. Then, <coughs> then effectively you have a larger system that will do system one first and then do system two. So you take an input and uh, become the output of system one and you put output of system one as the input of system two. Then you got the uh, new output. Okay. So this is a serial <coughs> series connection of uh, two systems. And also you can do parallel connection. So you can have an input signal and you copy a signal. So you, you put a sig input signal to two signals that's the same. And uh, feed them to two different systems, so system one, system two. And uh, now you have two different, possibly two different outputs here. So same input, but maybe different output. Then you just add them together, and then you take the total output. Yeah. And yeah, <coughs> so you can connect system this way, that way, and uh, you can combine both of them to get a hybrid connection like this. You can imagine that this is kind of like a electrical. <coughs> so this is kind of like a electrical connection. You can draw a whole bunch of the <coughs> whole bunch of very complicated graph and get a system. <coughs> Okay, so you can hook up this way, so input split, so the upper one go to uh, system one, system two, later lower one go to system three, and then together and get system four. Okay, so you can get the uh, <coughs> complicated network. And uh, another very interesting concept is you can build a system that has feedback. Okay. So the information flow doesn't need to be like totally causal. So like something feed to something and feed to something. So you can actually feedback. For example, here you can have an input and uh, you kind of go through system one, then you split the output of system one into two things. Okay? So you can split the output of system one and uh, feed back to system two. Then have the output of system two go back and everything together to input. So you can have this weird feedback loop. And uh, yeah. Then you can see kind of what's a stable solution of this or whatever, what will happen. So you can solve for what will happen if you have an input here and what's the output. Okay. And yeah, so this is a more complicated system. Okay, so that's a very rough idea of systems and let's actually go to things that has moments. Okay, so here we basically have uh, six important concepts. So we have the, uh, the system properties and uh, so they kind of split into four and the two. So there are four properties here, memory, invertible VLT, causality, and stability. And uh, we'll give the uh, idea and uh, <coughs> mathematical definition of them later. And uh, they are 
kind of important. So we have a test quadrants, and the homework quadrants are whether the system has uh, these properties. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I uh, described some natural property that will imagine whether the system has or not. And uh, there are two more properties that I will also get tested on, but they are more important than the four. They are time variance and li linearity because uh, together <coughs> together was <coughs> a system has both time invariance and linearity will be called LTI system. So with the linear and the time invariant system. And the LTI system are even more important than those four because uh, basically you will start will spend the whole semester studying LTI systems because they have very nice properties and you can analyze them uh, with a lot of mathematical tools. Okay. And yeah, so that's an overview and let's go to them one by one. Okay. So first property is memory. So what do we mean by memory? Uh, we kind of describing uh, uh, reverse way, so we describe what is not have memory. Not have memory is memoryless. And uh, memoryless means that uh, so you have an input and output and uh, a system is memoryless means that the output at some time t can be just calculated from the input at time t. So it doesn't depend on t before or t after, just the t exactly at this time. And it should be happen for all time. And uh, so this is for continuous time and uh, for discrete time is similar. For discrete time, the system is memoryless. If the output yn can be just calculated from input x of it. Okay. And uh, well, so those are memoryless. And if it's not memoryless, it has memory. Okay. So let's go to example. Uh, so this is a very good example here of a memoryless memory system. So y of n equal to, you have a very complicated function of x of n. So 2x over minus x over n squared and the uh, parentheses uh, everything together as squares. Okay, so you know, y of n can be a very complicated function of x, x over n, but uh, you only you can calculate from x over n. And uh, in particular, it doesn't depend on uh, x over n minus 1 or x over minus 2, etc. Okay. It's just from x over n. And uh, yeah. <coughs> And uh, then y of t, and uh, some other examples of so y of t, if it's just x of t, then obviously it's memoryless. And uh, y of n just equal to x of n, then it's memoryless. Okay, question so far. And uh, then let's see some system with memory. So this thing is, uh, is similar to bank account. So this system, is, we will actually see it a lot, so let's remember its name, it's accumulator. So if y of n is sum of x of n, uh, uh, it's not really x over the uh, sum of x over k for k equal to minus infinity to n. So it's the sum of all pairs of x over k, sum of all pairs of <coughs> x over k, then this is memory, right? Obviously, you remember all the pairs x over k. So that's why it's a system with memory. So this is like a big account with no interest rate. Okay. So this is memory, and uh, then there is integral. So this is like a continuous time version of accumulator. If y of t is minus infinity to t x of tau d tau, then this system is memory because uh, this y of t depends on uh, x of t at, uh, <coughs> at t, x of tau at tau less than t. And uh, then you have a delay, so y of n equal to x of n minus 1, obviously y of n now depends on n minus 1, so it only also depends on pace, then this is a system with memory. And then we have uh, one funny example at least. So by our definition, if y of n equal to x of n plus 1, so you depend on future, then this is also a system with memory. Well, even though you think memory is about pace, but uh, by our definition, memory from future is also memory. Okay. So if y of n equal to x of n minus 1, so uh, the input signal in the future, then this is also a system with memory. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay, uh, we will have uh, something similar. So causality is very similar to memory and we'll have more example later. Okay, uh, for now let's go to the next property. So invertibility and the inverse system. So what do we mean by invertible? Invertible, uh, the operational definition is very easy. So it just means that, uh, so you will have a system and uh, you, if there is an inverse system that can invert whatever you do on this system, then your system is invertible. So that means that uh, so your system here, 
uh, have some input x and y of n, and if there is some inverse system, I'll take y of n, give you the x of n back for x of n, then, <coughs> then the system is invertible. So I guess here we should say, uh, yeah. So this is it for all input x of n, x of n or x of t, or maybe, uh, yeah, <coughs> this is this plan, so let's say x of n. So if for all x of n or x of t, uh, you can, you can find us, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, the quantifier is that if there exists a system such that for x of n, then uh, the compost together output is also x of n. Yeah. And uh, let's get an uh, example. <coughs> so, example of uh, y of t, uh, a system that dis we describe the output uh, input relationship here. So, the output y of t equals to twice x of t, so you just multiply your signal twice, two. And uh, so, the obvious uh, inverse operation here is you divide by two back. So if you have another system where the output is uh, one over two of the input, so W of T <coughs> equal to, so this is slightly confusing. So this system we're describing the output and input, where input is uh, Y of T and the output is W of T. So W of T equal to one over two Y of T. And uh, so you see that if you interconnect, if you serial connect those two together, then your output is Okay, multiply by two, divide by two, so back go back to the same signal. Okay, so is y of t equal to two x of t is an irreversible system, or sorry, irreversible system. And uh, then we can have a more complicated system that's also irreversible. So this is an accumulator system. So we want a bigger picture. So this is system. So if y of n equal to summation k from minus infinity to n x of k. So it's the sum of all pairs x over k. Then you can actually still calculate the <coughs> you can still calculate the x over n from this y of n because if you just take a difference of y of n and the y of n minus one, then you get back the x over n. Okay. Any questions so far? And uh, then we have uh, example here. Oh, maybe we could do a question, but where is your right answer here? So y of t equal to x of t squared, this is not invertible. Okay. So we have an example of not invertible. And uh, this being not invertible is kind of easy. <laughs> so uh, I guess here, uh, okay, so now things get a bit more complicated. So uh, if you want to, so you will get a question, homework question or exam questions asking to show, asking you to say whether a system is invertible or not. And uh, so the yes answer and no answer are kind of different. So if you want to say a system is invertible, then basically you want to find this uh, inverse system. And uh, kind of show that if you, uh, <coughs> if you <coughs> string those two systems together, they go back to the same output. So the total output equal to the original input. So if you want to say it's invertible, then you want to find the, <coughs> so maybe that's right here. So uh, invertible. So you will get uh, this question of being invertible. And uh, if it's yes, then you want to find, uh, find the inverse system. And if it's no, then it's a bit more complicated. Uh, what is this? Again, <laughs> yeah, yes, then you want so annoying. <laughs> hmm? Wait, what? Uh, what? <laughs> Yes, you want to find the inverse system, and uh, if no, then then you need to prove that it's no. So a good way to prove it's no then is like this. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, uh, I guess I will write here. So if it's no, then a good way is to show that uh, you have two systems that give you two inputs that give you the same output. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is one of the way, and uh, you can think about more ways. But if you have two inputs that give you the same output, then obviously it's not invertible because you don't know which one you should invert into. Okay. So for example, in this system, y of t equal to x of t squared, then you have some x of t or minus f t, x of t. So those two different signals, they both give you the same y of t because when you square this minus sign disappear. And uh, yeah, <coughs> and uh, then this will be a counter example. So because of this example, you cannot find the inverse system. Okay. So yeah, so no inverse system if you have uh, two inputs give you the same output. Okay, question so far? No. Okay, then let's go to the next one. So causality. Causality is like a weaker than memory rest. So causal system means that the present output, so the output at some time, depends only on input at the present time and in the past. So for example, if you have some system look like this, Okay. And uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, let's draw. Okay, so so you have some input x of t give you some y of output y of t, and I saying so for all time, so this y of t is only the result of uh, x of t from the past like here. Okay, and uh, yeah, so for all time, this y of t is only calculated from the past. And uh, in particular, means that if you change the future one, this point doesn't change, then this is causal. Okay. And uh, causal should be a pretty physical idea. So uh, whatever happened now only depends on whatever happened in the past. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, so one of the mathematical definitions is that y of t is independent of whatever in the future. So independent of x of t plus tau for tau for when tau is greater than zero and uh, y of n, and uh, you can also have the discrete time similar, so that's uh, y of n is independent of x of n plus k for k greater than 0. Okay. And uh, you can see that causal is a weaker thing than memoryless, because memoryless says that uh, this y of t here depends only on x of t here, but now you can depend on a little more, you can depend on whatever happened in the past, x of t failed in the past. Okay. So that's causal. And uh, let's get uh, some example of causal system. So a lot of physical system you will think it as a causal. So what happened in the uh, circuit system, or uh, like driving a car, there is a causal system. So whatever the velocity of the car right now only depends on how much force you put on the car in the past and uh, right now. And uh, whatever current you have in your circuit system only depends on the driving voltage in the past and uh, right now. And uh, also our uh, integrator is the causal system because you are integrating all from only the past to right now, and uh, this different system is also a causal system. Okay. And uh, but you can also have non-causal system if your y of n depend on some n in the future. So for example, you also have a different system, but if you are taking difference to the future then this is a non-causal system because you have x of n minus 1 that will affect your y of n. And uh, similarly, you have your x of, your y of t is just x of t plus 1 and this is causal because, well, obviously it depends on t plus 1. And uh, another example is this uh, smoother function. So sometimes you want to smooth your function, so you take an average of, uh, so your output at y of n is some average of x of n like plus minus some range m, and uh, this is also non-causal because it depends on uh, <coughs> it depends on some positive, okay, I guess negative k here, negative uh, negative k is positive, and uh, so this system is to go to into future a little more also. Okay, now we go to a part where we can have uh, some pause here, so. Okay, so these two systems are they causal or not? So first system is y of n equal to x of minus n. And okay, so if you think it is causal, raise your hand. 
And if you think uh, this system is not close, so raise your hand. Okay, you are not right, good here. And uh, what about second system? Well, t equal to x of t cosine t plus one. If you think it is close, so raise your hand. Okay, and if you think it is not close, so raise your hand. Not much. Okay, people <coughs> go with everyone. And uh, yeah, people, you, we guys are getting this correct. And uh, let's see this uh, very quickly. So well, when equal to x of uh, minus n, and uh, if it needs to be causal, then for every n, <coughs> uh, this well of n should not depend on n in the future. But the n can be negative. So when n is negative, so for example, n equals minus 4, then well of minus 4 depends on x of 4. But this 4 is, into a, is the future of well of minus 4. So this is not causal, because for n less than 0, this well of n depends on the future of x of n. Okay, not close And uh, this uh, the second one is more tricky, but I don't know, people are very good at this. Okay. So you see a t plus one here, but uh, uh, it's uh, just a t plus one. This, t plus, this cosine t plus one is just uh, what uh, you can think of it as a whatever function on t. And uh, so how y of t depends on x of t is this is actually uh, a memoryless function. Okay. Yeah, so this is not only causal, this is memoryless because y of t can be just calculated from x of t and uh, a function of t. Okay. So function of t is, uh, doesn't depend on input, it's just some function of t. So this is actually more than causal, this is memoryless. Memoryless. Okay. So because y of t only depends on x of t and this is cosine t plus 1, you can think of it as just function of t. And uh, well, it depends on time, so but doesn't depend on the input. Okay, okay, we are very good here. The next concept, uh, I think this is the last one. Stability. Okay, stability is a bit more confusing. So first, we give uh, intuition. So what do we mean by stability? We think uh, system is stable if we kind of stay around the same point. Okay. So here are two examples. So we think about this pendulum is kind of stable because if you push it a little bit, you will just swing back and forth in the in this quite confined area. And uh, if you put the pendulum in reverse direction, then it's uh, very unstable because you push it a little bit, then it just fall down here. Okay. And uh, so this is the idea we want to describe. So sometimes the system is stable, it push it a little bit, it stays the same. And unstable, it push it a little bit, it just uh, goes away. Okay. And, uh, but our, <coughs> okay, so that's the idea, and then we have a mathematical definition. A uh, mathematical definition is kind of crazy here. Okay. Uh, so the mathematical definition here is uh, if it's stable, then we have bounded input give you bounded output. So bi, bo, stable. Okay. If, uh, <coughs> so, okay. And uh, so this is stable, and if it's not bi, bo, then it's not stable. So what is bi, bo? bi, bo means that uh, if your uh, <coughs> input is bounded, so if your uh, input signal x of t is bounded by something for t, then your output signal is also bounded by by something for OT, and uh, similarly for discrete time. So if your x of n is bounded by some value for n, then your output is bounded by some value for n. Okay. So yeah, so this is BIBO stable. So I guess another way is saying uh, for input bounded, then the output is bounded. And uh, for input bounded, yeah, <coughs> yeah. So this is BIBO stable. And uh, if it's not BIBO stable, then we think it's unstable. And uh, here we have some schematic, schematic that's uh, saying the system is bounded or not. So we kind of think, uh, so if we have a nice signal here, so kind of bounded signal as input, and uh, by your output signal just goes uh, to infinity because for some reason, then this is uh, not stable. And uh, then, uh, <coughs> But a stable <coughs> system would like this. So you have some input signal that's kind of stable here. The output signal can squiggle a lot, but it's still bounded in some region, and this is stable. Okay. And uh, so here is some example of stable signal. 
So y of n equal to a square of n, then this is actually b i b o stable. So because uh, whatever your x of n is some value, then your y of n is just some value squared. And uh, then our bank account example is not b i b o stable because <coughs> yeah, there are a lot of ways it's not stable. So for example, if you just uh, if the input is just one dollar every time, then your bank account will accumulate to uh, infinity. Okay. And uh, okay, so let's go to our question two. So now we have also two signal. Are they B I B O stable or not? Oh, question. Oh, this one. Oh, sure. Oh, wait, this one. Okay, this is just uh, this is just intuition. So this is actually not the B I B O unstable. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's why I said our definition is crazy. Yeah, because here so yeah so this is actually not B I B O unstable because the y of t can go at most like two pi here, right? Yeah. So it cannot go to infinity. So yeah, so this is just schematic schematic, and uh, if you go to this uh, very crazy definition of BIBO, then then this is kind of stable <laughs> because it is hard bounded, but you can only go to pi over two. Yeah, yeah, but this gives you an idea of what we think. I guess, yeah, if you think a pi over two is infinity, then this is unstable or something. <laughs> I guess you can maybe take a tangent theta here. Uh, anyway, this is just the idea. Yeah, okay, then let's go to easier questions. Uh, uh, those following two systems, BIBO stable. Uh, why then? I guess if people want to answer why also. So I guess uh, let's do a raise hand first. So if you think it is stable, raise your hand. It is Y of T equal to TX of T. Is it stable, raise your hand. If you think unstable, raise your hand. Okay, people are not very sure on this. Do people want to say it's unstable? <laughs> And uh, what about this one? Y of t equal to e to the x of t. If you think it's stable, raise your hand. Okay. And uh, if you think it's unstable, raise your hand. Okay. People are timid, but uh, generally you are still getting this correct. Okay. So the first one is unstable. <coughs> uh, because uh, you can have a bounded input and have an unbounded output. Okay. And. Uh, <coughs> So yeah, so you have bounded input, x of t equal to 1 is bounded, and uh, then you y of t equal to t this is unbounded because t can go to infinity. Okay. And uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, and uh, on the other hand, this is the exponential function, y of t equal to a, e to the x of t, although even though you look at exponential, uh, if you have whatever bounded input, you have bounded output. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so let's say our x of t is bounded by some b, and uh, then <coughs> then you can show then then y of t, you can just bound it by uh, this e to the b. Okay. Uh, yeah, because your x of t is less than your absolute value is less than b, then x of t is between minus b and b. And uh, you can just plug in the formula and uh, see that e to the x of t is between e to the b and e to the minus b. And uh, yeah, so our output is bounded by e to the b. e to the b can be a large number, but it's a bounded number, so this is actually stable. Okay. And uh, so yeah, so from this example, you can see that how you answer the stability equation. So. So if you want to say stable or not, stable, then yes is, uh, then for yes, you you need to show that for x of t bounded, then y of t less than infinity, and uh, then no, no example, you need to show that exists x of t bounded, and uh, y of t go to infinity, such that y of t will go to infinity. Okay, so that's for stability. Okay, any question? Okay, if not, then, oh, we have 10 minutes. I guess we can go time invariance a little bit. 
Okay, so once again, so now we go to the last two, that's very important concept, time invariance. So time invariance, so this slide is just for the intuition. So the intuition of time invariance system is this system just doesn't change with time. So how it behaves and its characteristic is fixed over time. So for example, go back to our favorite uh, circuit system and the car. So if all those uh, constants in the circuit system, so those uh, capacity and the resistance and the, or the mass of the car, if those are all constant of time, then we think this, those two systems kind of do have the same behavior regardless of, regardless of the time. Okay. So even though they might be causal, they might depend on, oh sorry, they might, be, they might have memory. So what output might have memory, but we think the input and output relationship doesn't depend on time. Then it's time invariance. Okay, so those things are a bit tricky to describe. And uh, how we describe this, is, is, uh, this time invariance is this. So we say that time invariance, if, uh, I guess, uh, if you want to write the quantifiers a little more carefully. Okay. Time inverse means that you have uh, some input and output x of t. So uh, let's say continue the time. So if x of t input to a y of t output, then x of t minus t0 input will give you y of t minus t0 output. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, I guess, right here for x of t input and uh, t0 shift, and uh, you have uh, this thing, okay? So, <coughs> so if you have uh, some input, to give you some output, and uh, you uh, do arbitrary shift on your input, then you will have the same op output with the time shift, then your system is time inverse, because that means that uh, you do the signal at whatever time, then you will get the same response. So that's time inverse. And uh, it's kind of hard to calculate, but anyway. Uh, so we kind of see this other this picture. So <coughs> uh, this is an example of a time invariance. Uh, y of t equal to sine x of t. And uh, so we think uh, you have some whatever input, x1 of t. And uh, then you will have output y1 of t equal to sine x1 of t. And uh, so you want to kind of go to this block to check whether it's time event. So first you do some time shift on your x of t. So now you have uh, x2 of t is the time shift version of x1 of t. So x1 of t minus t0. And uh, then you need to check two things. Okay, uh, You need to check whether so you can put this x of 2 of t into back into your system equation. And uh, then you see your y2 of t equal to <coughs> uh, sine of your x2 of t. So it's a sine of uh, sine of x1 t minus t0. Then you want to see whether you go from here, same as you go from here. So it's uh, 1, 1 of t and uh, also transfer by t0 go back to the same thing. And uh, yeah, you see that's the same thing. So this is sine of x1 of t minus t0 equal to your sine of t minus t0 because you change the t to t minus t0, then you change the t to t minus t0, and uh, so this function will be equal to this function. Okay. So yeah, so here is the sigmatic. So <coughs> here is some x1 of t, and uh, then some system will give you y1 of t. And they will show you uh, x1 of t to by t0 to get x1 of t minus t0. And uh, then you see whether, then, then you go run this through your system and uh, get some uh, <coughs> y, uh, it's hard to describe, some y2 of t. And uh, then you want to search whether this y2 of t equal to y1 do <coughs> doing y1 on time shift, y1 of t minus t0. And uh, then we have uh, another example here, and uh, I guess we can do a raise of hand again. Show of hand. So it's y of n equal to n x of n is this time invariant. If you think it's time invariant, raise your hand. If you think it's not time invariant, raise your hand. Okay, yeah. So this is time, not time invariant, and uh, it, it, uh, it's pretty obvious because you have n here. 
so how well when response to x <coughs> Uh, how well when response to this x of n depends on the time n here. So this is uh, not time invariant. Okay. And uh, yeah. And I guess uh, we can also yes answer yes and no. Uh, yes is a little easier to show. So yes, you just need to run this circle block and uh, show that the same. And the no is a bit tricky. So uh, I guess it will be a little more linear. So if you want to absolutely show that uh, it's not time invariant, then then you give a particular input x and a particular t0 and show that they are different. So here we show such an example. So we say input the delta of n, so if uh, x of n is delta of n, then the output y of n will just be zero because delta of n only has value at n equals zero. And then n equals zero, this is, uh, well, you multiply by zero, so this is total is zero. And uh, by the time you put your delta of n by one, so you get delta of n minus one, then the output will be still delta of n minus one, because it will be one times delta of n minus one. So you see that uh, these time shifts don't give you the time shift. And, uh, but sometimes you can maybe show like this example. <coughs> Uh, I guess, yeah, if you can just write out the algebra of this block, so, and uh, see these two functions are different, this is uh, also a acceptable answer to whether a system is time invariant. Wait, uh, is this, uh, auto memory? Uh, okay. I think it's, uh, hello, hello? Well, uh, Okay, I think I need to speak louder. Can people at the back still hear me? Yeah, okay, I will speak louder. And yeah, so here is an example of, I guess we already do the boiler, so let's not ask again. So whether this system is time invariant. Uh, it's uh, less obvious, so y of t equal to x of 2t. And uh, the system is uh, not time invariant because uh, I guess it's not so obvious, but you can check. <coughs> So here we have the picture example first. So we have some x of t look like this, and uh, y of t is uh, uh, is squeezing. Okay. Oh, question? No. Okay. So y of t will squeeze x of t uh, to t equal to zero. So yeah, by a factor of two. So y of t will be a, a thinner triangle here. And uh, if you do a time shift of x of t, then <coughs> then you can have uh, this block here from zero to four. And uh, so the corresponding output y2, so if you do a squeeze of this thing, but the squeezing is always squeezed toward this t equals zero. So you will become this block uh, from zero to two. And then you just see that this block is uh, not, uh, so this thing is not a uh, uh, two safe time shift of this thing. Because if you do a two safe time shift, it's uh, this. So it's a block of the same width, but uh, if you do time shift of y1, then by two, then you should start at one instead of starting at zero. So you see that this function is different from this function, so the system is not time invariant, because uh, whether you go system and the time shift is different from you do time shift and the go system. Okay. And uh, we can check this algebraically more. So we have x1 of t and uh, go to <coughs> uh, go, go through the system to y1 of t equal to x1 of 2t. And uh, then you do time shift here, so you change t to t minus t0. So y1 of t minus t0 is x1 of uh, 2t minus 2t0. And uh, on the other hand, you do time shift first. So x1 of, you have x of, x2 of t equal to x1 of t minus t0 and uh, then you go to the system so you go <coughs> 2t here so y2 of t is x2 of 2t so you get twice on t but you only twice on t not you don't have twice on t0 anymore so it's x1 of 2t minus t0 then you see that as long as t0 yeah you see that this is minus 2 0 t0 here and it's minus t0 here and uh, those are most likely different functions Okay, and uh, yeah, it's exactly on time, and uh, I think uh, next 
Yeah, the class will start on linearity and uh, maybe even a TI system. Okay, yeah, so let's take a 10 minute break. BIDO這一塊啊為什麼它這個是stable x平方不是指的是x平方的话那平方的话不是就等于 <笑> 你想的是y 那這個是什麼 <笑> 對啊,外文是1,它是一個抗爭方式。所以它不是不能算x <笑> 所以就是input的一定要假設input的是boundary 對啊可是它為什麼是考試我現在說今天搞不大對 這兩個這兩個 就是你要看你的錢會變無限啊因為每天加一塊錢就每天加一塊錢那你基本上賺無限就越來越多嘛會到無限大學所以它這樣stable的它其實爬上它就會爬所以就是 
这个的话跟那个 culture 有有关系吗？还是没有，是两个不同的概念。大大环境，这是两个不同的概念。大环境已经大环境。然后你这个就是你，哎、欸，你是这种方式，但是你也玩在自己的方向。就是你也是尝试方，就是你也是靠尝试，它它是它像这个时间一样规划，可是你玩它会比你慢慢发展出。嗯，我觉得你要看是自然上是它歪走的关系，就是看它的 S 跟 Y 的。这个就是你，就是你把这个放低嘛，啊，它的 Y 就是自己发展。那这个的话，这个的话，它不是画出来结果，不是应该是那个一样是 exponential， 不是要往外凑吗？为什么它这个是哪一个曲线，然后再反过来？所以你要看 x 跟 y 的关系，这是这是 system， 因为这边很强的。你要看，你要看所有，你要看所有帮底的的 input 会给你怎样的 output？ 你要看 in， 就是你要想，你要记得 c 是人是有 input 的跟 output 的，所以我两条线。对，像就是像这里画的嘛，我有两条线，你要记住有两条线，你要看放不同的线，然后它，你进去的这条放不同的线，然后 output 的线会变成什么样子？所以，对，那它算出来是 exponential， 就是它只是。不是，你他他不是看 t 的，就是就是 x 和 t 的 t 是不一样的。你你不是看，就是就你想的是一个方选，但我想这里这里是 system， 我要看 input 跟 output 的方式关系。我要看 input 跟 output 的方式，我可能不我可能会画两张图，我可以在这里画对不对？哎，我在这里画吗？对，我要看 input 跟 output 的关系，可能这样子画还是比较好。所以我要看 input 是在 boundary 的，对，哎，我想看，哎，可以擦掉了，不然我再画下面就好了。对，我要看 input 跟 output 的关系，所以我说我 input 是 boundary 的，对吧？ input 可能画了一个 boundary 的这样子，这个 boundary， 哎，然后我要看我 system 会变成什么样子。对吧？我可以有一个不同的棒的，我可以有一个很大的棒子。这个是这样的感觉，对。他说我一个 input 是棒底的，然后那我 output 可以有一个更大的棒的，这个棒的它差别是 exponential 的，但它也是棒底的。所以这样的话，我是一个 stable 的。可是呃，如果是这样的话，我可以假假设它 output 的。呃的 system 它是呃是有一个数值，但它不会继续叠叠的。可是问题是，它这个问这个啊，就是刚刚老师不是有说那个那个 bank bank account 这个东西啊，它不是一样是存东西，那这样的话它不是也是一样是一个值吗？对啊，可是它这个值会到无限啊，这个 bank account 的这是，好，用 bank account 再画一张图好了。以以这个例子来讲，它就是。这边它刚好会。Bacon count 的是这样子吗 ？Bacon count 的，例如说我们不要不要放利息好了。我的有一个 bond 的 input 是这样子，每天存一块钱，然后它是 bond 的嘛，对吧？那每天存一块钱，我会变怎样？每天存一块钱，我钱是这样的感觉。哎、欸，呃，略奇怪。呃，假设假设我从这一点开始存啊，我 stay function， 从<笑>今天开始存钱。<笑>对，然后那我存钱会是这样子吗？对吧？那这场绑定的、啊，因为我我不能协调先把它绑住嘛，对吧？我看这个很有问题哦，多做张 slide， 我放个空白的。<笑>放个空白的 slide 来讲这个。嗯。我等下来画图。<笑>
，要做一个决定，就是外交边的一个事情。啊，你，好，你，啊，如果你，如果你哎，是一样，那你可以过去，你聊一聊，不要跟相关的。啊，如果你同意过来的话，就变成说你每个点。他只是，他只是他的时间点会比较早比较晚，但他，他他结果却一样还要一样。对，真是嘛。对，因为比较是一个是一个是，对，我觉得啦，就是说你你其他的时间点呢，就跟你的时间有关系。对。Okay, so I think people are more confused about stability, so let's try to draw a little bit more picture. So yeah, stability is very confusing because uh, it's not about whether a function diverges or not. You need to remember that stability is a property for system. So there is input and output. You really need to see the relationship between input and output. Okay, so let's see an uh, example of stable system. So, <coughs> uh, uh, say example, we have a stable system, just a system we see. So x of t equal to, sorry, not x of t, y of t equal to exponential x of t, right? Uh, so example of a stable system is y of t equal to x of t. Uh, y of t equal to exponential x of t. Okay, so you see exponential here, but this is stable because why? Because you think about you have uh, input signal here, and uh, it's stable. Okay, so you uh, input maybe a small squirrel here. Okay, and uh, it's, uh, so it's a bounded input because it's inside some bounded range, right? So you have a bounded range, bound. And uh, then the system, what it do is you will get exponentiated, and okay, exponential is actually positive. But so it's exponentiated, so this bound will become huge. Okay, so you will get a really large <coughs> oscillation here. Okay, so the this uh, bounded range will get exponentiated, so but it's still bounded. Okay, bounded, and uh, so that's why we say this system is stable here. Because you have uh, some bound here, you have a bounded input, whatever bounded input, you get a bounded output. Even though the, the range of the bound might get exponentiated, so it will become very large, but it's still a finite number, so it's a bounded output. And, uh, <coughs> yeah. and uh, then let's get an example of uh, unbounded function, right? So it's, uh, I guess, uh, let's see, uh, maybe y of t equal to this integration minus infinity to t and uh, x of tau d tau, okay? Uh, yeah, because the continuous time function is easier to draw. <laughs> Although, even though we should do accumulator. But anyway, so y of t is the integration x of tau d tau. Mm. And uh, so this is unstable because, uh, let's see. 
Do I want? Okay, maybe I'll still do N because it's easier to see. Uh, so our accumulator is Y of N. So this is a bank account with no interest rate. Y of N is just a summation. Uh, K from minus infinity to N. Uh, X of N. Okay. So this is a bank account with no interest rate. You just uh, adding things together. Okay. And uh, so if we have a bounded input, so I start, maybe I start saving money from today. Today is t equals zero, okay. So our input is this x equal to one, 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 okay. Our state function. Input is the unit state function, one, 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 okay. And uh, so this is uh, u of n, x of n equal to u of n. Okay, and that is bounded because well everything is zero, zero and one is is kind of bounded and that is bounded. Okay. And uh, but what's the output here? Uh, why is this part so weird? Uh. Okay. Maybe I should then. Okay. So this is bounded input, and uh, then our system will say. Well, if I save one dollar per day, then okay, this will be funny. Then my output will be one, two, three, four, right? And then the output will be well, my bank account will increase by one dollar per day, and uh, this is really unbounded, right? Because whatever number you I, whatever bound I want to set, then at some point I will. This will go over. Okay, so this is unbounded because at some point or my bank account will suppress that value, maybe in one million year. Okay, so this is unbounded, and uh, so whatever. So I have a bounded input that give you, give me unbounded output. So this is unstable. So this is a transformation from bounded input to unbounded output. This is unstable. Okay. Uh, question? Yeah. But for the exponential function, uh -huh. if x t goes to a greater value, yeah. it's going to be unbounded. Why isn't it? Why is it still just the exponential or whatever greater value? So it will be bounded. It goes to bounded? Yeah, yeah, so if you want to go to formula, right? So if your x of t is bounded by some b, then your y of t is just going to exponential b. And if b is a finite value, then exponential b is a finite value. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So here are some uh, schematic example. You have bounded input, then you have bounded output, then it's stable. So but here, so actually proving it's stable is a bit harder, right? So proving stable, then you need to show that for all bounded input, the output is bounded. And uh, but for being unstable, you just need uh, one counter example. For if you want to show it's unstable, then you need to show there is one bounded input give you one bounded output. Okay. So yeah. So you want to say it's stable, then you need to give a uh, for all argument. Oh, what's going on? Yeah. You want to show it's stable, then you want the uh, for all argument. So, for all bounded input. And uh, if you want to show it's uh, unstable, then you just need to exist. Okay. <coughs> uh, let's kind of circle this thing here. Yeah, to prove this, you need for all, and to prove this, you need to exist. Okay. Yeah. So, that's for stability. Any question? Okay. And uh, then there's time invariance. Time invariance, <coughs> like we say, is kind of hard to check. So if you want to check, well, mathematically, you want to go through this square. So you want to say whatever input have, then you want to check uh, where uh, these two way commute. So you want to say where you pass through system and uh, do time shift is equivalent to you do time shift and then pass through system. And uh, here we see that even though the shape of the output, so you go to a two things. So those two things, one of them is this, and one of them is this. 
you know the shape is the same, but uh, the time of uh, their start is not the same, then this system is still not time invariant because you want to have the uh, exact same time shift. <coughs> you want to have the uh, exact time shift on your output when you time shift your input. So here we time shift the input by two time step. Then you see that the output only time shift by one time step instead of two time step like this. So this system is not time invariant. Okay, question. Not, then let's go to linearity. Linearity is a bit similar to time invariance, but somehow I think this is more intuitive. Okay. Linearity means that uh, the output is linear in the input. And uh, linear, if you took a linear algebra, usually mean two things. So it means that uh, there, if you have addition of the input, you have the addition, corresponding addition output. Or if you multiply by the input by a scalar, then the output is also multiplied by a scalar. And yeah, so this is exactly the definition of linear linearity. So system is linear if you obey both of these. <coughs> so yeah, so let's go back to this uh, more carefully. So for <coughs> so I guess uh, here I should also add the quantifier here to be more precise. So we have uh, for O x one and uh, x two. Uh, also, this is for discrete time, but it's very similar for continuous time. So. So for x1 of n, x2 of n, and uh, then you have x1 of n go to some y1 of n, x2 of n go to some y2 of n, and uh, then if the system satisfies both the additivity and the homogeneity, then it's linear. And the additivity means that uh, if you put x1 of n plus x2 of n as input, the system should give you y1 of n plus y2 of n as output. And uh, also if you multiply by the input by any scalar, so you have x1 of n times any <coughs> number a, and uh, then the output should be this same number a uh, times your y1. Okay. Okay. Uh, any question? Okay, so here we have continuous time. So it's really a sense of, uh, let's don't write everything like once again. So you just change this n to t. Okay. So yeah, relativity and uh, homogeneity. Uh, but once again, remember this is about uh, <coughs> this is about system. And uh, yeah, so the linearity is really thinking linearity of a system is really thinking about the relationship between input and output. So you say if you have some linear combination of input, sorry, if you do some linear transform on input then you will get the <coughs> corresponding linear transform on the output. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, here we can give some interesting derivation. I guess it's not too important right now, but uh, but uh, you can just from those things, uh, I guess from the second thing, then you can show that uh, if your input is zero, then output is zero. Because uh, <coughs> if your input is a zero function, then it's uh, 0 times uh, whatever input, and uh, that should go to 0 times whatever output, and uh, that should be 0. Okay. Uh, yeah, so here is a small corollary saying that a linear system take a little input to 0 output. But uh, that's a little digress. Let's go back to uh, <coughs> more property of the linear system. Okay. And uh, so those are the two basic property, and uh, from then you can you can string them together and then think about if you have this uh, arbitrary linear combination of a lot of signals, a lot of input signal. So you have a home boundary of a sub k, k from I don't know what range, uh, maybe not infinity, but anyway, <coughs> k from some finite finite range, finite state, and. Uh, <coughs> And uh, then you can have each signal multiplied by some coefficient a k and adding them all together. So this expression we'll call it a superposition. Uh, maybe it's, yeah, <coughs> call it a superposition of a whole bunch of signal. And uh, or I will say it's a linear combination. Okay, so superposition means uh, this kind of thing. Okay. 
the super position of uh, whole bunch of signal. And uh, then <coughs> by the linearity, you can use uh, those two relationships, whole bunch of time. And uh, you see that your output Y of N will have the, basically the same superposition, but you change your XK to YK. So you have the same coefficient AK and uh, summing them all together. And uh, where XK and YK are related by XK input will give you YK output. So this is a linear system. You have whatever linear combination of the signal, then you will get, uh, <coughs> sorry, you have whatever linear combination input, you will get a corresponding linear combination output. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and the continuous time is the same thing, but uh, n becomes t. Okay. So you have a summation ak, xk of t, then the output will be summation ak, yk of t. And uh, yeah, so now let's go to the question of is this system linear? Okay, y of t equal to t times x of t. Is this linear? <coughs> uh, I guess <coughs> uh, that's just uh, uh, well, the answer is already here, so let's not ask. Okay, so yeah, uh, here, uh, I guess the proof is a bit. Now a bit informal, but uh, so we kind of so we need to check uh, those two equations, but kind of check them together. Okay, so what do we do is so this is saying we can check them together as follows. Okay, so well anyway we want the two signal two input output pair. So we say we have a whatever x one of t and a whatever x two of t and uh, go to y one of t output and uh, just from this <coughs> excuse me this relation y1 of t is tx1 of t, and uh, y2 of t is tx2 of t. And uh, then we think about, okay, so then we want to check uh, those two. And uh, we can check them together by by using the superposition, okay. So we just check what if our input is x3 equal to this arbitrary linear combination of x1 and x2. So x3 equal to, <coughs> uh, ax1 of t plus bx2 of t. Okay. And uh, then we kind of do the block thing once again. Okay. So we have this linear combination as input, and uh, then we calculate the output. Okay. And uh, the output is, well, it we go through here. Okay. So we kind of, uh, I guess we can draw the picture here. Uh, so we kind of have uh, x1, x2, and uh, go to y1, y2, and uh, then we have a linear combination of a x1 plus b x2, and uh, then we have uh, uh, y3. y3 is a system of uh, on a <coughs> x1 and b x2, and uh, then we want to check whether this is equal to uh, a y1 plus b y2. Okay, so yeah. So once again, what we are checking is whether those two are equal. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so we have uh, ax1 plus bx2 here. And uh, then you go to y3, is just t times this thing. So t times a plus x1 plus bx2. And uh, well, this seems like a really linear thing. Anyway, so you multiply the t in. So it's uh, a t x1 plus b t x2. Then you see this is exactly a a y one plus b y two, so this is is linear. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is is linear, and uh, okay. Now question: Are uh, those two systems linear? Okay. Time to show hand. So first one is y of t equal to x t square. Is this linear? If yes, raise your hand. Uh, no, raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. People think this is really not linear because you have a square here. <laughs> Okay, now this one is harder. Is this linear? Y of n equal to real of x of n. If you think it's linear, raise your hand. Okay, if you think it's not linear, raise your hand. Okay, yeah, this is a tricky question. <laughs> okay, and okay, let's see the easier one. Okay, the easier one, so this one, if you want to say it's not linear, it's, uh, you need to give a counterexample. And here we have an easy counterexample. So. 
if your x of t goes to ax of t, then your y of t becomes a squared y of t. And uh, well, for your a not equal to plus not a not equal to one or zero, then uh, this thing is not uh, a times y of t. So this is not linear. Okay. And uh, the second one is tricky because uh, it satisfies the additivity. So real of uh, x1 plus x2 equals the real of x1 plus real of x2, and it's nice. And uh, but if you want to check the homogeneity, then it's funny because you need to remember we have complex number. So real of uh, ax1 equal to, yeah. <coughs> so this one will make you, so this is a trick question. So the first part make you think it's linear, but uh, when you check the coefficient, then you have a subtle part. So real of ax1 is equal to a times real of x1. And uh, it's uh, not quite true if your a is a complex number. Okay. Okay. So if you, so we have an example here says that you have a j times x of t and uh, with your x of t being real and uh, <coughs> uh, yeah so j j x of t with x of t real just go to zero and that's not j times x of t yeah so yeah so this is a trick question and uh, this is actually not linear if you have a uh, complex coefficients complex a, then the complex a might just uh, become zero by taking this real. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so this is for x of t real and a equal to j, then you see that uh, ax of t, <coughs> the, the output corresponding to ax of t is not a y of t. Sorry, ax of n is not a y of n. Okay. So that's a trick question. And uh, then there is another trick question here. Uh, we have an answer here already. Okay. Another trick question is uh, what about this function that looks, uh, sorry, this system that looks really linear. Okay. Well, then is uh, a linear combination, of, is a linear transformation on x of n. Well, then equal to 2x of n plus 3. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, well, we have a big answer here. This is actually not linear. Okay. And uh, this is because uh, something we already say. Uh, something we say is that if you want a system to be linear, then the zero input should give you zero output. But that's just not happening here. Okay? So you have uh, zero, <coughs> 0 as x of n here, then your y of n equals 3. And uh, then, so this is really not linear. So another way to see this is, well, you can break this with homogeneity or additivity. So I'll try to break with uh, additivity. So you see that if uh, x of x1 is 0, then y1 is 3. x2 is also 0, y2 is 3. Then if uh, x3 is uh, x1 plus x2 is still 0, then your y3 is uh, still 3, right? But it's not equal to 3 plus 3. So yeah. So because of this plus three here, the system is actually not linear. Okay. Even though this uh, your y of n is totally a linear function of x of n. Okay. Okay. And uh, here we have a more complicated calculation, but it's not too important. So let's skip that. Okay. Uh, okay. But oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh this. Oh this. The three pluses should be the two pi, three plus, three pluses. Wait, which one? The, the, oh, the there's a table. Here? <laughs> I didn't quite check. Wait, sorry, which, which line? Uh, the blue. Blue? And the oh, here? Yeah, the three not equal to three plus. Yeah, three not equal to the three plus. Right hand side. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Uh, 3 plus 3 is a y1 plus y2. I'm trying to say y3 is not equal to y1 plus y2 by additivity. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 3 not equal to 3 plus 3. That's why this is not linear. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so that's the only important thing to say here. You, We have uh, other calculation here, like the book, but I think it's okay. But anyway, 
Uh, people want to say this thing. Well, this look like a linear transformation, so they still want to say it's linear. So we invent another name that's called incremental linear, incrementally linear, and uh, incremental linear <coughs> means that uh, if you take a difference of uh, two output, it's a uh, linear. <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, difference of uh, two output is kind of a linear in the uh, difference of uh, two input. And uh, I guess uh, this uh, this idea will not use too much later, so let's just go very quick. And uh, anyway, so uh, <coughs> incremental linear system can be just decomposed to a linear system and uh, a zero input. Okay, so for example, in our 2x plus 3 <coughs> example, then the output is you go through a linear system. So you x of t to 2x of t. Then you add a zero input response. Okay, so the idea of zero input response is actually more important. We'll see this later. Uh, but yeah, so you can have a linear part, then add a zero input response. Okay, and the zero input response is just whatever input is, whatever output it is when the input is zero. Okay, so obviously it's these three we keep talking about. When your input is zero, then output is three. Okay. Uh, I guess I should write this uh, once again here. So the system is y of n equal to two x of n plus three. Okay. And uh, so this plus three is a zero input response. Uh, it's, uh, we call it y zero of t. Uh, shit, it's a t, not an n. Uh, it's confusing. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I guess I uh, erase this and uh, write as t, a t. I'm not sure why we change it n to t. <laughs> uh, anyway, so y of t equal to 2x of t plus 3. And uh, yeah, and uh, so the 2x of t part is the linear part, and uh, we have a zero input response. Okay, any question? not then we have a summary page i guess it's not too important either so let's uh, skip the summary page and go to chapter two okay so yeah we have a linear system and uh, then this is a trick form of a really linear form that's actually not a linear okay so let's try to go to next oh uh, yeah Next, PPTX, and uh, let's go to chapter two. And uh, as we said, we'll be going about LTI system. Is this working? Uh, sorry, one second. Let's try to get the video working. Chapter two. Okay, yeah. So as we said, Chapter 2 will be about the LTI system. So it's a system that's both linear and a time invariant. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, the important thing to concept we'll introduce here is convolution. It's a very nice way to, well, we'll see. It's a nice, very nice way to calculate about your LTI, the output of your LTI system. And uh, then we will talk about properties of the TI system. So obviously they are linear and time invariant, but we'll check the previous four property, <coughs> the memory, causality, and uh, uh, <coughs> invertibility, and uh, uh, there's one more of that, <coughs> stability. Okay. Yeah, so we'll show how to check the property, properties of your TI system. And uh, then we'll talk a, bit of, a little bit about differential and difference equation and a uh, little more on security function. And uh, yeah, then there are other things that's less important. But anyway, so uh, TI system, as we said, so this is a quick review of what we just talked about. Your TI system is a system that's both linear and a time invariant. Okay. And uh, we'll see that uh, if you have both those quality, then you can actually describe the output by a simple function. Uh, <coughs> so uh, once again, linearity means that uh, you have uh, two different inputs, then you take a linear combination of the input, you will get the corresponding linear combination of the output. And the time invariant means that you make a time shift on the input, then you will get the corresponding time shift on the output. So the same and not here. 
Okay. Uh, twenty minutes. Let's see how much we can talk about. Okay. And uh, so first uh, in chapter two point one, this is a concept that uh, you will be uh <coughs> using throughout the whole semester. Very important. So why we like a UTI system is because we can describe the output by basic signal. So this is a four step process. So first we will show that, uh, so let's do a discrete time but because it's easier. So first we will show that any discrete signal can be represented by a sum of impulses. This is a kind of RC. And uh, then we will show what the, uh, <coughs> we'll say, we'll describe the unit impulse response of a system, LTI system. And uh, then from here, then we will see that the LTI system can be modeled by so-called convolution operation. Uh, convolution with the unit impulse response. Okay, uh, I guess let's go, wait. Oh, I forgot to DT. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's first see the first concept. Okay, so, well, the idea is uh, we want to write, okay, so let's forget about system. Let's uh, describe signals. So I want to write uh, any discrete signal as a linear combination of unit impulses. And uh, here is a reminder of unit impulse. It is the simplest function possible. It has uh, one impulse at n equal to zero and a zero other where. And uh, let's say, <coughs> and uh, it's easy to see that uh, any discrete signal can be represented by some impulses, or I guess I should say superposition of impulses, or a linear combination of impulses. It's because, uh, well, uh, discrete signal are those spikes at uh, each time step, right? And uh, at each time step, I can think of it as uh, some number times the uh, unit impulse. So for example, at uh, this uh, <coughs> n equal to minus two, I can think of it, uh, <coughs> this spike here as uh, x minus two times delta of, uh, delta n, minus n plus two. Because delta n plus two is uh, one at uh, here, at uh, minus two. And uh, then you multiply by the height, then it will become this spike. And uh, similarly, uh, this minus one is x of minus one times delta of n plus one. And uh, the zero spike is equal to x over zero times delta of n, etc. So you see that if you add uh, all those spikes together, then it should become your x over n. Okay. Okay. And uh, more algebraically, uh, what we want to say is x over n is the summation is x from min so some k from minus infinity to plus infinity. So this is uh, x of k times delta of n minus k. So delta of n minus k is a spike at, uh, uh, at uh, <coughs> n equal to k, and x of k is whatever height x, x of n at, k, at k, right? So we have k equal to minus two, k equal to minus one, k equal to zero, k equal to one, k equal to two, etc. So at from minus infinity to infinity, then your x of n is this linear combination of impulses. Okay, any question? So this is just signal, okay? We're just saying any discrete signal, discrete time signal can be written as this linear combination of uh, unit impulses. Okay. And uh, okay, and uh, now let's uh, go back to our system. So we want to describe our LTI system. So let's first use linearity. So our system is linear and our input is this linear combination. So it's a really nice, uh, <coughs> So it's a very nice phone to use for linearity. Oh, do I forgot to? Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so our system, so our input is linear and uh, the output is, uh, we should have the corresponding linear, right? So input is, uh, is a linear combination of impulses. Then the output should be the same linear combination. So this is the same x of k here. And send some summation range k from minus infinity to plus infinity, and uh, then some response to delta of n minus k. Okay, and uh, now we don't know what's the response to delta of n minus k, so we just say it's uh, whatever thing. Okay, so we say this is a linear system, uh, and uh, it has some response to those impulses, and that's just called h sub k, h sub k of n. Okay. 
So H sub of k of n by definition is the output corresponding to delta of n minus k. Okay. And here we use linearity to say that uh, y of n can be written, can be expressed by those uh, h sub k. Okay. So here we already see that we have a lot of restriction on the system. So if a system is a linear, then it's a response to whatever input. This x of n is whatever input, right? So the linear system is respond to whatever input can be basically described by just this h of k, h sub k. So we only need to know how the system responds to all those impulses, then we can describe uh, its output to whatever input. We can so we can just read this x of k from x of n, and uh, then yeah. So if fix those uh, h of h sub k, then the opposite then the system is totally described, right? If you know h sub k, then you know, you know h sub k for OK, then you know how the system behave to any input. Okay, question so far? So this is the uh, uh, first, simpl <coughs> first simpl simplification of the description of uh, our LTI system. So we say linearity, and we found out that our system is totally described by those h sub k. And h sub k might have different things, right? So here we have uh, some example. So uh, you have some input x of k. And uh, so it's a linear combination of three spikes at, uh, uh, at uh, n equal to minus 1, 0, and 1. And uh, our linear system, it maybe have uh, three different h sub k at uh, k minus 1, 0, 1. So you have maybe maybe this response to impose at minus 1, 0, 1. And uh, then, <coughs> then you think uh, your input is a linear combination of uh, these three spikes. <coughs> and uh, then your output uh, will be corresponding linear combination. So here we have, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here our input is uh, this spike, this spike, and this spike. And uh, this spike will give you some, <coughs> some output. Uh, so this x minus 1 times this h of minus 1. So h of minus 1 is like this. And then times this negative h minus 1. So it becomes this negative thing. And uh, then you have this uh, x0 times delta of n. And, uh, <coughs> uh, and then become goes through the system, become x0, h sub 0, f1. And uh, similarly, this back at x1, x1, h, h1, delta of n minus 1, become x1, h, o, <coughs> h sub 1. And uh, so you add uh, all those three response together, and that's a response to your input x of n. Okay. Question so far on the linearity. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's linear, and uh, so to describe a linear system, then you need to write uh, all those h sub k, and uh, then we use a time invariant. So we use a time invariant, then we find out that uh, we actually don't need to describe all h, all h sub k, because if a system is uh, linear, <coughs> is a time invariant, then then this different, then this different input uh, delta of n minus k. They are just time shift of delta of n. Okay, so we will, yeah. So because because the uh, delta of n minus k is the time shift of delta of n, then we only need to describe uh, how the system respond to delta of n. So delta of n will go to some h sub zero of n, and uh, let's uh, we'll call this uh, h of n. We we'll just get rid of this sub zero, and then call this uh, h of n. And uh, this is called a uh, uni impulse response. Okay. And uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So if the system is time invariant, then we see that delta of n minus k is a uh, time shift of delta of n by k. So this uh, h sub k should be just h sub 0 should be time shifted by the same k. OK. So I should really put it right here. So this k is the same as this k. And uh, that's because, yeah, this is because the uh, time event. Okay, so let's uh, write this 
the our tiny variant block here. Uh, yeah, because we have delta of n go to h sub zero of n, and if you do time shift, then you get delta of n minus k, and uh, this is a tiny variant. So you go here, and it should be same as going down. So it should be same as h sub zero of uh, n minus k. And uh, yeah, so we get uh, we get this number by going this way, or this expression by going this way. Okay, so yeah, so this is using time invariant. We see that you go this way is h zero of n minus k, and uh, that should be the this uh, h. Uh, wait, maybe let me go like this. Okay. So this is that, and uh, that's uh, respect our notation. And uh, so this thing, and uh, this thing we call it h sub k of n, okay? So we know, we see that h sub k of n equal to this h, of z h sub zero n minus k. This is how we use time invariant, okay? And uh, okay, so hopefully everyone accepts this. And uh, so we just uh, substitute it this h sub k of n with uh, h sub zero of n minus k, or just call it, we don't do a sub zero anymore, we just call it h of n minus k. And uh, finally, this is a very important equation, going to see this basic whole semester. So we see that for LTI system, y of n equal to summation k to minus infinity to infinity, s of k, h of n minus k. Okay, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, this equation and uh, just substituting this h sub k of n to h of n minus k. Okay. And uh, yeah, so what's important here is you see that with a TI system, you can totally describe this y of n by just uh, knowing this h sub h of n. Okay. This thing is just time shift of h of n. So if you know h of n, you know the system totally. And what's h of n? H of n is is a is a uni impulse response, so it's uh, how you hit the system with the uni impulse. Is uh, remember uni impulse is is the easiest function we have. You hit the system with the uni impulse, and you get a uni impulse response H of n. And uh, once you know H of n, you basically know how the system responds to any signal. Okay, so for any signal, you can just think about this linear combination. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is a convolution sum. And uh, 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 an expression like this is called uh, as convolution. So we kind of, uh, okay, so we kind of not look at this. And uh, if you just look at the expression on this side here, the summation k from minus infinity to plus infinity, x of k, h of minus k, you can think of this is just how you uh, operation you do on two signal, so you have a signal x of n and a signal h of n, and uh, then we can define a convolution just as if you have a signal h of n, x of n, h of n, then the convolution of them is this summation k from minus infinity to plus infinity, x of k, h of n minus k, because yeah, this makes sense, right? So uh, uh, I guess it's a bit confusing, but it's okay. Yeah, so this convolution is uh, how we how we write is uh, the symbol star here. Okay, so it's uh, yeah, it's an operation that you take two signal, two signal on n, and uh, you get all the signal that's also on n. Because if you read this carefully, uh, we have n and a k here, and the k is actually a dummy variable you summing over. So here, this is a function of n just uh, as you require because it, y is also a function of n. So convolution, you take two signal of n and they uh, give you one signal of n by doing this calculation. Okay, and uh, yeah. So I think that's for today. We have more example. Uh, uh, I guess we can stare at this a little more. So yeah, that's a uh, very important derivation for today. So any LTI system can be expressed as a convolution operation. And it's characterized by this unim impulse response H. And uh, it's like this. 
So any x of n go to y of n, and uh, equal to this convolution of x of n with uh, h of n. So this h of n will describe your arrow, this arrow here, arrow here, and uh, your y of n is summation k from minus infinity plus infinity, s of k h of n minus k. Any questions so far? I think we can stop today for here. And uh, so later on, we'll give you a lot of uh, example of uh, convolution, and uh, you will do a lot of convolution in homework. And uh, but for now, I think uh, the derivation is good enough. So I think we can stop a little early today. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. See you next Tuesday. Professor, yeah. why is the x notation necessary since at the end of the day it's the same as the delta notation, right? Yeah. Uh, no, actually it's not delta. Actually it's the output for the delta. So, yeah. So, h is this h sub 0. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, h is uh, you to take uh, delta as input and uh, output will be h. Yeah.